All right, Turbo Commander fans, we got a great video for you today and one that I have wanted to produce for a long time. I'm going to take you through the engine start sequence in the Commander with a deep dive into what is actually happening inside the Garrett TPE 331 turboprop engine as the start sequence progresses. The TPE 331 in this video is flat rated for 717 shaft horsepower. Starting the Garrett is a simple process. There are only a few controls that the pilot needs to manipulate. To begin, I'll set the power levers. Power levers move freely from flight idle to forward thrust. To go into ground idle and reverse thrust, you must lift up on the levers to cross the gates. There are two types of fuel controllers installed in Commanders, Woodward and Bendix. The start position for the power levers depends on the fuel controller you have. The easiest way to identify your fuel controller is to look inside the engine area inlet at the T2 sensor. Woodward controllers will also have a placard on the power lever quadrant. If you have a Bendix, the power levers are placed at flight idle. If you have a Woodward, the power levers are placed between flight idle and ground idle. The condition levers will place the props in high or low RPM. Lifting up and moving the levers aft will shut off fuel to the engine and feather the prop. For starting, we want the props in the low position. Recall that the Garrett TP331 is a geared engine unlike the Pratt & Whitney PT6. That means that the prop is connected physically to the turbine spool through a reduction gearbox. Because of this physical connection, we must start the engine with the propellers out of feather. If you fail to do this, the air load on the feather blades would cause so much resistance to the compressor spin-up that airflow would be limited into the burner cans and a hot start would occur. The blades are physically held in the start position by spring-loaded locking pins located at the blade root. At first glance, the overhead panel can be a little intimidating for the new commander pilot, but really it is quite simple. On the overhead panel, each engine has a control switch, horsepower limiter switch, ignition override switch, and fuel hydraulic emergency shutoff switch. So really the only two that we need to be concerned with on a normal start are the control switch and the HP limiter switch. All right, time to light the engine. We'll start with the number two or right engine from the pilot's position. Yeah, that's no fun. So much you want to be doing We start by rotating the control switch to the fuel pump on position. Then we check the gauge to ensure the fuel pressure rises to at least 15 PSI. We continue to rotate through air start. This turns on the unfeathering pump. Finally, we press in on the switch so that we can rotate to the ground run start position. This applies power to the starter motor and begins to spool up the compressor. When this occurs, we begin to see the RPM gauge come alive. At approximately 10% RPM, we have enough airflow through the engine to turn on the igniters and open the fuel valve. You will notice to the left of my hand is an orange light. This is an indication that the igniters are energized. Now our primary focus is on the RPM and ITT gauges. We are looking for two things, steady increase of RPMs and ensuring the ITT temps remain below 1149 Celsius. If RPM stops increasing or temps indicate that we will exceed redline, we immediately put the condition lever to engine off. At 35 to 40 percent RPM, the secondary fuel nozzle is now open and ITT temps should have peaked at this point and will begin to decrease. Above 50 percent RPM, the engine is now self-sustaining. The starter will disengage and switch into generator mode, and the igniters and unfeathering pump will turn off. The start sequence is now complete. The engine is stabilized at 70 percent RPM and ITT temps are 650 Celsius. We can now bring the generator online to recharge the battery and provide power for the number one engine start. We wait for the amp load on the number two generator to stabilize and lower to under 200 before starting the left engine. The process for the number one engine start is exactly the same. I've only seen a Garrett almost hot start once in five years and luckily that was while I was still in training and my instructor was quick enough to pull the condition lever before it over -tempt. I was very fortunate to see this during training because the ITT needle moved so fast that it would certainly have caught me by surprise if I experienced it on my own. Treat starting engines like you treat takeoffs. Assume the worst is going to happen and be spring-loaded to react. It is when you become complacent that you'll burn an engine up.
With both engines running, we bring the number one generator online. Now we can turn on the avionics, lights, and all the other electrical loads. Before we can move, we have one last task to accomplish. We must get the propellers off the locks so that we can achieve forward thrust for taxi. To do this, we'll move the condition lever for each engine forward to at least 85% RPM. We then move the power lever over the gates and into reverse. This rotates the prop up, releasing their hold on the locking pins and allowing centrifugal force to retract them. We know the pins have released when we see a small spike in horsepower and fuel flow. Once off the locks, the condition lever is returned to low for taxi. The small levers below the power and condition levers are the friction locks. Now we are ready to taxi. So that's it. May appear a little confusing after first exposure, but believe me, it is really simple and quickly becomes second nature. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you love the Turbo Commander like I do, check out the many other videos I have exploring the many facets of this amazing aircraft. If you like abandoned airplanes and you really enjoy my abandoned airplane series, you can click the link in this video to enjoy all six episodes. Until next time, fly safe. See ya!